Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, real quickly, I just want to point out something I, that I thought was interesting here. In Revelation, there is a verse that is um, very interesting. Here, I think it's an 8. Let's check this one out. So, in Revelation 8, verse 13, we're going to look for a parallel. We notice it says, And I beheld, I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, the NLT, all right, this is not the only one, but in particular, the NLT says, Then I looked and I heard a single eagle. Now, is the eagle and the angel the same thing? No, it's not. If you're trying to figure out what the answer is, no. It's not the same thing. It's crazy because, for many reasons, if you go to, like, say, Revelation 22, what's, what's Revelation 22 say? Does anybody remember? Something here in the, toward the end, if any man shall take away... From the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. <laughs> what are they doing here? They're changing stuff. They're taking away the angel. They think they are, don't they? I mean, look at this. All these people insane? An eagle is not the same as an angel. Look at this. These people are all insane. And this is, here you go. Your Douay Reims Catholic Bible. Huh? Is that crazy? It's not just one or two. Wow. I mean, that's crazy to me. That's crazy. So, anyways, I want to share that. Uh, I just... You think translations don't matter? Uh, you, you don't want the words of men. Do you? Don't you want the word of God that comes directly from God? That's what I want, and that's what I got in the King James Bible. Consider this. Jesus says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. I, I think people are under... appreciating underselling the Word of God <laughs> it's insane to me it's crazy it is the quick it is the spirit that quickeneth it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profits nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life All right the Word of God is spirit and life all right so today I want to just uh, go over um, this this guy right here. I don't know, what's his channel? Standing for Truth. Standing for Truth. And then falling on his face because he doesn't understand anything. That is crazy. All right, so I, I don't even know what I was going to talk about here. Let me just place something here. Literally he's not bound. Some may say he's bound, but he's bound by a bungee cord. <laughs> that's a little tongue-in-cheek. But that's just one verse here. He, this video is he, not meant he. to go in-depth into the millennium. You can find a video titled Proving Premillennialism, where I uh, leave no stone unturned. It's about an hour and a half, if I remember correctly. So please do check that. Last thing I want to cover, the resurrection of the dead. This is an overview. 
of the resurrection of the dead. I've noticed there's a lot of false views on the resurrection as well. And this goes right... right so this guy, I'm going to tell you right, right away, he's going to promote the idea that uh, he's going to be having sex after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And he's going to be not, in, not just having sex, but he's going to be producing babies after the end of the world. And this whole doctrine, this whole 59 minutes and 30 seconds is based on lust. And what's the Bible say? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> knowing this first, man, knowing this first, and it's not knowing this second, third, knowing this is part of the deal, no, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers scoffers walking after their own lust and what's this guy gonna teach he's gonna teach the idea that you're gonna be having sex after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. So let's consider Luke chapter 20. Uh, you know uh, how uh, they were asking Jesus, uh, you know, what happens if, uh, you know, man, a man's brother dies? And then he, he takes his brother's wife and raises up seed unto his brother okay and then this happens seven times whose wife whose wife of them is she for seven had her to wife well according to mormonism they're all going to be married and having sex forever and ever all right but this isn't real you know this isn't mormonism this is reality right i mean this you want the truth? Man, the truth is there is no sex after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry. The children of this world marry and are given in, in marriage. It means a father gives his daughter in marriage. Pretty simple. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world the world of everlasting life and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. All right, so let's go right here focus on this right here focus people focus the, the children of this world right, the children of this world now like oh, let's, we got to do it this way Luke 21 <clears throat> they're asked <coughs> excuse me They ask Jesus, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? I guess I have to go to in order to find that exact um, phrase, end of the world. Let's go to Matthew 24, but it's the same thing. They're, it's the same thing, same event, same moment in time when they're talking and asking Jesus privately, When shall these things be? And what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The same thing. And Jesus is telling them, you're going to see all these things happen. And for example, wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things first, these things must first come to pass. But the end, because they're asking him about the end of the world. 
he says, but the end is not by and by. The, okay, so it's not the end of the world yet when you hear these wars and commotions, okay? It's not the end of the world yet. End of the world. The end of the world. So the children of this world. So this world is coming to an end. All right. And the children of this world, that's coming to an end, marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, the world of everlasting life, the world to come, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. When does the end of the world occur? Well, the end of the world occurs <laughs> when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now this, this I don't know how people don't get it. Because it's all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This world is coming to an end. And when Jesus comes, there's going to be absolutely no doubt about it. Men's hearts failing them. For fear because they know it's the end of the world right and it's unbelievable we could go to um, yeah a lot of places here let's go first of all I just want to do this here because the, the parable of the wheat and the tares is pretty incredible if I know where it's at, here it is. The harvest is the end of the world. So at the end of the world, remember, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. So there's no more. The children of this world, they marry and are given in marriage, but this world's coming to an end. In the world to come, there is no marriage. Got it? I, this I look man I'm telling you there's a whole bunch of people whole bunch of people that don't get it I mean it's as obvious as all can be yet 99% of the all the people that you'll see on YouTube and in your churches they all believe in this idea that they're going to be having sex after the end of the world. And remember what it said in, in uh, knowing this first. Second Peter 3, knowing this first, that, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. This is not normal stuff. I, yeah, I know it seems normal. Because everybody's teaching this idea, that the, all the, the all these ideas that are related to the idea of having sex after the end of the world, it, it's commonplace for people to preach and teach these ideas that are related to the idea of having sex after the end of the world. It's crazy. This world has gone crazy. And this is another example. Christians who are born after the rapture. This is all. That's an insane statement to make. It's insane. Because it implies that there's have, there are people having sex after the end of the world. Because the rapture is Matthew 13 is when the wheat are gathered into the barn and the tares are binded up and burned it's the end of the world it's the end of the world and here because this guy is so full of sexual 
imagination. Everything is sex, sex, sex. So he's trying to fit it in to his biblical doctrines. And then he's typical. And he's got the support of many, many big name pastors, all his favorite false teachers. They all teach the same thing. This idea that people are having sex after the end of the world. Okay. It's insane. It's insane. And it's, it's, to me, it's just incredible. It's amazing. It almost seems like nobody, nobody sees it. I mean, very few people see it. All right. So let's uh, <laughs> let's go to First John chapter two. All that is in the world. Okay, think about this. Just consider this. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All right. The world passes away in the lust thereof. So when the world passes away, when this world comes to an end, so does the lust also come to an end. It's part of this world. And this is why John is saying, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If that breaks your heart, too bad, tough titty kitty, because there is no more sex after the end of the world. Okay, and the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It should be obvious. Matthew 24, Mark, Luke, Mark 13, Luke 21. I mean, it's all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Genesis 3, when the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Speaking of the end of the world. And at the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and the wrath of God is poured upon the entire world. And this world comes to an end, and there is no more death this is the moment when death will be swallowed up in victory okay that's it all right so th consider this that when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven what happens well, the heavens and the earth, which are now, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, just as God destroyed the world in the days of Noah by water, this time it's going to be by fire. <laughs> that is pretty obvious, right? So, if... When Jesus comes, just as it says here in 2 Peter 3, Jesus comes and the heavens pass away and the elements melt with fervent heat. You're not going to be having babies anymore. Your sexual fantasies are done away with. Period. You telling me this isn't... And the world passes away and lost their well. The, lust, the world's going to pass away, but the lust are going to endure through all this. Are you stupid? The 
day of the Lord is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall be or shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, not uh, wherein dwelleth righteousness, not a new earth with more sacks. I mean, what in the H-E double hockey sticks are these guys preaching? Christians who are born saved after the rapture. That's insane. What in the world are these guys teaching? Wow. Wow, okay. So I just wanted to end it here. No, I got to do it this way. I want to end it. Let me end it here. Let me go. Let me end it on this. Let me end it on this here. Alright, so consider this. Consider this. Alright. Consider this. What we read in Second Peter 3. Reserved unto fire. Right? Like I talked about in the days of Noah, the world was destroyed by water, but now the world is going to be destroyed by fire. And then we read in Revelation 20, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Same thing. It's the same thing. It's the wrath of God. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 16. It's prophesied all throughout the Bible. And when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Right? So, knowing that, then you ought to know what exactly here in Revelation 20 this moment in time, how it corresponds with the rest of the scripture. And then use a little common sense. Use a little common sense here. I know it's hard. Stop listening to men and just believe what the scripture actually says. Right? They on the earth compass the saints and fire came down from God and devoured who? They. If fire comes down, all right, stay with me. If fire comes down and devours them, but not the saints. There's only one possibility. <laughs> There's only one possibility, and that is we are up in the air with God. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you put the pieces together, right? Think about this. The day of the Lord, when Jesus comes as a thief in the night, it's the same moment. What happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? Do you know? Well, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, it tells us, right? The angels gather together the elect. We read that in same thing in the parable of the wheat and the tares, Matthew 13. Right? Same thing. The angels gather together the wheat. Right, the angels are the reapers, right? And also Jesus says that um, the angels 
will gather together the elect. Right? Where am I at here? Alright. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, uh, what, I'm sorry, what do I have to, I have to show you the exact warning, don't I? Otherwise somebody might not get it. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, angels will gather together his elect. Right, that's well, that's what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. So knowing that this, when this fire comes down out of heaven, that this is on the day, the moment, if you will, the exact time that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Behold, the day of the Lord. It's the same thing. So what happens? We are lifted up, right? And isn't that what Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 are saying, and we can go to First uh, Thessalonians 4, and then we can go to First um, Corinthians 15, right? Right. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven, right? So when Jesus comes down from heaven. Right, what happens? The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, figure this. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The day of the Lord. Right? And then, what happens when he comes? Right? He, the heaven shall melt with the great noise the element shall melt with fervent heat what's it say here in Matthew 24 the sun shall be darkened and much the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken it's the same thing it's the same thing the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up so go to Revelation 20 and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them same thing it's the wrath of God. It's the vials of the wrath of God. It's the same thing. We're being told the same thing all throughout the Bible. These are not different than separate dispensations or whatever confusion, uh, confusion that people try to teach. It's, it's simple. You could be dumber than dog do and understand this stuff. This, oh, the only thing that's required is faith. Believe what you're reading. You don't believe it when it says the world passes away and the lust thereof? You don't believe that's directly from God? Why? Well, it contradicts with my idea of having sex forever and ever, or whatever, for a thousand years or whatever. And a thousand years ain't going to be enough for you. At the end of a thousand years, you're going to ask for another thousand years. It's worldly. It's wicked. And it's coming to an end. No matter how hard you preach it. No matter how hard you preach it. The lust. Is going to pass away. Alright. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. In the world to come. Alright. 1 Corinthians 15. Alright. Alright. First uh, Corinthians 15 what happens what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven see this parallels what we read in first uh, Thessalonians 4 right first the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this parallels it's the same thing same moment in time all right same moment in time. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, and when this happens, we go from corruptible to incorruptible. We go from mortal to immortal, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin 
is the law, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, consider this. Just consider this. Death is swallowed up in victory. Christians who are born saved after the rapture, you're saying, well, it implies that there's some people who are going to be born after the rapture and saved. And some people are going to be born and not saved. Why the hell did Jesus come? If people are still having sex and still living and dying, what's the point? The world You were saying the world's not coming to an end. You're essentially calling Jesus Christ a liar. Saying that the world's not going to end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Even though he was asked specifically, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And when Jesus says, you'll see me coming in the clouds of heaven... And then you'll know it's the end of the world. This is obviously the end of the world. The great sound of a trumpet is the end of the world. And they shall gather together the elect at the end of the world. And <laughs> what's Revelation one say, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail. Everybody's going to wail because of him. Everybody's going to know. Whether they know it now, they're going to know it then. That it's the end of the world. They're going to know. They're going to be, well, they ought to be happy. Hey, one, another thousand years of guilt-free sex. yabba dabba do. No. They, they're going to know. Deep down in their hearts, there's no more sex. I'm telling you. And you ought to know. The world to come, it's going to be much better. Much greater than... All of your sexual fantasy, fantasies combined. Much better.